All right, well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, you know, first of all, really appreciate uh, what you all do and, and the coverage you provide. I've been thinking a lot about uh, as I kind of make my way through year five. Hard to believe. Five years of the nitwits. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> um, as I, uh, <laughs> well, 20, 21 years of nitwits. <laughs> um, as I make my way through, uh, through year five, what's really special uh, about Penn State, and um, and I think probably at the top of the list are our people and uh, and our fans. And you guys play, uh, you all play such an important role in keeping them connected uh, to us. And so I want to thank you for that. Um, you know, these bowls uh, don't happen um, at a time that's not inconvenient for you and your families. And, uh, and, and so just really want you to know how much we do appreciate the work you do. Um, we don't always show it uh, in, the, uh, in, in the best way, but uh, we really do appreciate it. And, and, and thank you for, uh, for what you do and the way, frankly, the way in which you do it and, uh, and your role in, uh, in helping us keep, keep the, the Penn State family uh, together and informed and excited uh, about what we do. Um, and, and that segue to uh, what's really exciting about what we are doing uh, right now, where we are, uh, James, um, as, uh, as he's so good at doing, um, it, you know, has, uh, has pounded it. But the opportunity for double-digit wins for the third season in a row, and I couldn't agree with him more from the standpoint of when, when you're at a, at a Penn State and have the kind of history uh, that we do, if you're gonna, you have the opportunity to do something for the first time ever. Um, that's pretty special, and obviously we've got business to take care of uh, tomorrow afternoon uh, here against a really, really good Kentucky uh, team that's had a great year, has had an historic year for, for them, uh, and uh, that will be no small feat, but obviously uh, looking forward to seeing if, if we can get that done. Um, so things are, are in a really good position uh, from a football standpoint. Uh, couldn't be more pleased to, uh, about uh, how things are going um, department-wide. We've certainly got some programs that are at the top of their game, some that, uh, that need some improvement. That will always be the case, particularly when you've got a 31-sport program uh, and, uh, and you've got a lot of mouths to feed and, uh, and a lot going on. Uh, academically, we've never been better. Uh, and, and we're really, really proud of that. That's been a staple for Penn State for decades. Um, and uh, I'm personally proud and proud on behalf of the department for the work that goes in uh, into that. Um, financially, we're in good shape. Uh, we've got a lot of mouths to feed, uh, a lot going on. Um, our people are our first priority. Uh, and, uh, and we've done some good things there over the past couple of years. Obviously, facilities is an ongoing uh, thing that we continue to pursue. Um, our fundraising, uh, I think when I talked to you all, most of you all at, uh, in July last year at, at, at Big Tens, uh, we started to see some momentum. I can get into some of those uh, details for you if, uh, if you'd like, but I feel really good about where we're going there in terms of um, setting records from an annual fund standpoint, doing really great work around, uh, around major gifts. Uh, but like everything else, still lots of work, uh, lots of heavy lifting uh, to be done. But we're up for up for that task. So really pleased um, and uh, and honored to have the opportunity to lead Penn State athletics and uh, and and work shoulder to shoulder with the great people um, that I have the privilege to do every day. What Thanks. Do you expect no. or hope <laughs> to uh, sign a new contract. Ah, glad you asked. Um, Dr. Barron and I, as, as I've indicated a couple of times, you all have asked me over the course of, uh, uh, of probably since uh, we talked about Pat's contract uh, last <laughs> April. <laughs> uh, it has been a discussion since then. There was no urgency for me, uh, no urgency for, uh, for Dr. Barron. We knew it would get done. Uh, we have come to an agreement in the last few weeks, uh, and uh, I believe that's with the board. Uh, who has the final say on that? So uh, I look forward to uh, getting some information from them probably early in the in, in 2019. Is it your hope that you will, when we hear the, the details, I'm sure, but is it your hope that you will be at Penn State for many years to come? Is that ab absolutely? Absolutely. I've told you all before, this is, uh, uh, you know, this is my last stop. This is uh, uh, wh where would where would I want to go? Uh, that's, uh, that's a better opportunity, that's a better fit for me than, uh, than Penn State, and this next contract will, will certainly uh, help me do that. What's special about Penn State to you? Uh, it's our people. 
uh, it's our people, it's our values, it's our insistence on, uh, on uh, both competing athletically at a really, really high level uh, in conjunction with uh, the academic piece, the student development piece, uh, the being great community citizens uh, piece, being a part of the community, being, a, uh, being really um, uh, helpful and positive uh, from an institutional standpoint. I was talking to our provost last night at this event, and he, he, he said, you know, he kind of looked around, he said, you know, I'm told, Sandy, that um, not a lot of provosts come to bowl games. Uh, and I started thinking back in my head about my experiences at other institutions. Um, but at Penn State, it, it really is one team. It's a, it's a total effort, and our, our provost is here, and our senior VP for finance is here, and, uh, and you know, whatever the number's going to end up in terms of, of Nittany Nation, we didn't have any problems selling our tickets and having people excited about getting out of State College and coming to uh, Orlando, Florida in, uh, in December. Uh, so it's, it's our people. It's their, it's their passion. Um, it's their connection. It's their demand and insistence on excellence at a really high level in every aspect of it. Do we like to win? Absolutely we do. Of course we do. Um, but it's not at all cost, uh, it, and it's with student athletes who, uh, who are truly that, our students, are, uh, are pursuing their uh, degrees. Um, nothing I like better than hearing that Saquon's already talking to uh, our academic counselors about how he, uh, you know, uh, does something in the spring to help advance uh, his degree. Um, and that's just one story um, out, out of all of them. Uh, so that's, you know, if you want to be here for three or four hours, I could keep talking about what's special about Penn State. Sandy, what was, as you worked through the contract, obviously you and James are not going to be together presumably for a long time. Um, he's been very adamant about making the assistant salaries very competitive on a level playing field with other programs. Do you feel like you guys have done that? I mean, obviously we can't, you know, get those contract numbers, but how do you feel like you guys have done it? Yeah, I think we've done exactly that. Uh, you know, we were a little bit behind last year. We, we uh, uh, I won't say mistimed uh, the, the market, but uh, with going from 9 to, to 10, there was a movement um, that, uh, that I probably didn't anticipate uh, in, in the way that, uh, that it went. N none of us really did. Uh, but we've rectified that um, in, in this year. Uh, we've already made some uh, significant moves with our, our current staff, and I think we're in good position. Uh, we're in very good position there. You guys what had I, some parking challenges this year, Sandy. Is there anything yeah. you can do moving forward? Is there, what are you guys doing on that front? Yeah, that's uh, you know, uh, no nobody wants more for uh, for our fans to continue to have uh, the best environment and the best game day uh, situation uh, in in the world. Uh, we've got the best tailgating um, that that there there is, and it's part of the the passion. Um, you know, the weather, there's not much sure much we can do uh, about it. I'd like to be able to uh, call somebody up and say, uh, please don't make it rain on these seven Saturdays uh, or, or cold or, or anything else. Uh, so what we're left uh, to do is, is make as many adjustments as we possibly can. You know, I've heard a lot, well, you know, you need to pave more of the lots and you need to do this or that. If we were able to do that, we certainly would, uh, but most of our grass lots are either intramural fields or, uh, or ag fields, uh, which uh, aren't, number one, aren't ours, and, and number two, the purposes for which they're used, the other, whatever the math is, other 358 days uh, out of the year um, uh, do not allow us uh, to, uh, um, to, to pave them. Uh, so for, for us, it's about, okay, what do we have within our control? Um, for all of our uh, grass field uh, situations, um, we made arrangements for our patrons for both uh, alternate parking um, as well as the transportation then in uh, to the game. Not ideal, totally understand, um, but in terms of the tools in our toolkit and our ability to take care of our fans, those are the things we, we can do. Uh, so we'll continue to look at. There probably are a, a small number of lots that we can make some improvements to so that they won't be as impacted by, uh, by weather, and we will, we will look at doing those things. Uh, and, and we'll continue to listen to suggestions. Uh, we'll continue to see what uh, tools we do have available to us, uh, but again, it's uh, we've got a lot. We've we've got a lot of constraints, both from a weather standpoint that we don't control, um, and then obviously from the the parking resources that we do have. There are uh, we, we have some constraints about what what we can do to improve those uh, those uh, those lots. Especially so the area right next to the stadium. Can you 
that are grass that cost a lot of money. Is it at all feasible to make those concrete ones? There, there are a, there are a few of them. There are some small improvements that we can we can do there. Is that and we'll look the, to do. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But was well, under how much is under your purview, and how much is under the purview of other areas of the university, and how much do you have to work with them to maybe try to completely. We're, we're, we're campus partners with, with all aspects of what we do, um, and a lot of that um, is not our athletic resource, but is certainly a, a campus resource. So the, the best example are the intramural fields and the ag fields. Um, those obviously are used predominantly for other purposes that uh, would not allow for, uh, for having them paved or graveled. And would this be part of... Um your overall master plan, is there any part of that that's going to address some of these parking issues? Because I know, you know, the weather's the weather, but it's, I think it's six games in the last three years that have been seriously impacted. Yeah, so that's why we continue to, to, to look at it. Um, the, the master plan has some, built, some buildings and some facilities in what are currently parking areas, which would cause a, a knock-on effect. Uh, but again, we're very limited from a parking perspective, from current grass lots, as to which of those we could make uh, either gravel or, or, uh, or pave. There was a question. Sandy, uh, what is uh, the status of Phil's departure? Um, and last time I checked, he's still departing, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> if any of you have suggestions about how I can change that, please let me know. Um, how does that affect the uh, athletic department? Is there a succession plan there? Yeah. First of all, we're really we're thrilled for, for Phil. Um, I, uh, I knew when he came uh, to Penn State uh, with us that he was going to be an athletic director, and it was going to be very soon. And, and I'll be honest, um, we're, we're really fortunate to have had him for four years, and he's done some phenomenal work, and we wish him nothing but the best um, at, uh, at St. Thomas. It's a great opportunity for he and, and, and his, his family, but we will, we will miss him. Um, you know, I, I uh, Kevin White is my is my mentor, um, and uh, he's lost an awful lot of folks over time at his various stops to to go be uh, ads, in, including me. Um, and it's uh, it, it's it's kind of a next man up, uh, next person up uh, mentality. Uh, we we are. Um, I've already been interviewing uh, for uh, for the position, and we'll go find a, a, a really talented uh, person. Uh, that'll bring a lot of the same skills, certainly some of the same experiences uh, that Phil did, but maybe do it in a, in a little bit uh, of, a, of a different different way. He helped you present the master plan going forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, will that be a role that the new person will uh, slide into as well? No, he'll continue to do that work from St. Thomas for <laughs> us. <laughs> right, Phil? <laughs> yeah, yes. That, that'll be something that, uh, that the person who, who takes up this portfolio will take on. Sandy, how are you guys doing with that master plan in terms of football specifically? Where, where are you guys at with that? Well, uh, you know, the, the, the football uh, uh, renovation plan for Lash, mm -hmm. for those fields, for Haluba, we continue to make great progress uh, through that. We're, uh, we're not completely done with the first floor, but uh, we're, we're closing in on that and making plans to move uh, to improvements on the, on the second floor. Uh, we, you know, we've raised and, uh, and spent over $30 million on, on Lash itself. Uh, we've probably got uh, another $30 million uh, to, to do here in, uh, in pretty short order. Uh, obviously, Haluba, uh, the, the, the outdoor uh, area and the outdoor practice fields are, are uh, another thing. Um, and uh, that, that's one of the things that had the pace has picked up. We've raised more in half a year this year for football um, than we have in any previous year in our history. Uh, uh, for, for football, and obviously we're only halfway through, uh, so we feel good a, a, about that momentum there. Overall, um, I feel very good about the case for support and our community really starting to resonate uh, from a facility standpoint. Uh, Penn State's strength has always been in uh, scholarship endowment. That's been the focus um, to the benefit of our, of our students and our community, certainly. We're shifting that focus. Uh, a little bit uh, to facilities, and that's taken some time for our community for that to resonate, for uh, that to to understand. Um, but we've done um, approaching 70 million uh, from a facility standpoint in the in the last few years, starting with the Morgan Center, obviously the improvements to Lash and the fields in Holuba. Um, 
we've done some uh, the uh, the Tom Bros uh, basketball training table and, and um, film facility. Uh, what we did with Panzer uh, with, with lacrosse. Uh, we've raised. Um, uh, we, we've been able to secure our two. Uh, let's see, our second and fourth largest gifts, uh, major gifts in our history, um, and and, uh, and they're both former student athletes. Uh, varsity S uh, letter winners. Um, so our community is, is really starting to respond um, to what the needs are and you know they uh, to, to, our, to the previous question um, uh, our, our community loves to loves to be successful, loves to win, loves the fact that we're doing it uh, with students that are also doing it in the classroom. They're great role models in the community and uh, and they understand they're starting to understand, fully uh, what it's going to take for us to be comprehensively excellent across the board. Certainly, football drives the train, drives it emotionally, drives it financially, um, but we kind of like to win in volleyball and hockey and wrestling and soccer and, and you know, so on and so forth down, down the line. And uh, that's going to take a lot of resources. Uh, and some of it is uh, are, are resources that, that we're creating from ticket sales and from corporate sponsorship and from the Big Ten uh, network uh, media contracts, but a lot of it's going to be on the backs of philanthropy, too. Is there any you kind? mentioned setting a record in the last half year. How much have you raised in the last half year, and is that coming from, like, classic Penn State donors, or are you deriving money from um, a new set of donors? I'm not sure how you define classic. Uh, you know, to me, yeah, to me, it's, uh, it, it's a mix. It's a mix of, uh, of all of that. And you know what? I don't, I could, I could root through my notes here. I don't have, have that figure. Um, but, uh, and, and obviously that figure is important because those are real resources that allow us to, to provide impact around student athletes. But I do think the context is the most important um, about, you know, that our community has stepped up. Um, and they're going to continue to step up, and we need to step up uh, e even more. But I'm very appreciative um, of uh, of the response uh, from Penn Staters, and it's the response to support students and to support our ability to do the kinds of things that we all know um, that uh, that are they're important to us. I mean, athletics at Penn State um, is a really important. Um, uh, Brand, brand builder and brand extender um, to the excellence that's going on all across uh, our, our campus. Um, and people are the most important thing uh, about that, uh, our students, and then the, 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 uh, the support that we surround them with from coaches to nutritionists to administrators are in there somewhere, um, to, to the folks that, uh, that sell tickets, to you, know, you name it. Um, and then the other things, uh, how we travel, uh, how we feed them, uh, the facilities that, that they work in. Those things are all important. I mean, you guys work in this. You know it. You see what's around us. Um, and uh, we don't have to be first in everything. Uh, but as we all know, you know, the, the gap can't be here. It can be here. It can't be here. What kind of time frame might there be on substantial improvements to Beaver Stadium? Yeah, that's something that, uh, from a master plan standpoint, you know, you've got, we've got we've got soccer, uh, we've got aquatics, we've got tennis, we've got the center of excellence in that first five. Um, but I think, as we've been talking about, uh, as I've said before, kind of playing in the background has got to be what's the runway, what's the uh, what's the plan, how we phase Beaver Stadium, um, and then obviously how, how how we pay for it. So that's got to that's got to run parallel, and it will continue to do that. You've been at a lot of the <clears throat> excuse me press conferences that we've been at, and James has been very vocal about being able to pay assistant coaches enough to prevent them from making lateral moves. Yep. How many of those discussions has he, has he had with you, and where are where is the athletic department in terms of being able to pay coaches, assistant coaches, enough to prevent them from doing that? Yeah, so I think the, the answer to how many of those conversations have I been in, it's been a multiple to the ones that you've been in. Um, but I also think uh, I, I answered it with Audrey's question here. Um, we've, we, James and I together, uh, as partners in this, have, have looked at where we need to be. He asked for a number. I gave it to him. Is there a timetable in the press box? <laughs> it's not urgent enough. <laughs> Even coming off its last performance. <laughs> yes, it's it's last performance, but you know that's not like something that happens every week. Go talk to those that cover the Oakland A's, right? You are familiar with that, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I would say that side of the stadium is probably the priority, um, but a specific time frame to the, the answer I gave to Corey's question, um, that, that I can't give you. Sandy, what are the, the conversations you've had with Pat so far this season? How does his extension impact what you want out of that program? What, where are you with him right now in terms of what you want moving forward? After yeah, that? well, his extension was a big part of that. Uh, is uh, you know we stepped up our schedule um, and uh, we've got a we've got a young team and uh, are there are there some uh, you know some maybe some disappointments in there sure absolutely um, but uh, all all in all uh, I'm excited about going into the the, the core of the Big Ten uh, te season and, and seeing what these guys can do. Are you so. generally committed to seeing him see that contract out as much as anyone? Yeah, I'm not generally committed. I'm fully committed to Pat and his leadership of our program. How about Coakley's? Are there uh, a lot of hard questions in the past few years? There's sure. A lot of people. A absolutely. Um, and nobody's asking those questions uh, more fervently than, than Coakley's. Um, there's no doubt uh, that, that where that program has been for the last uh, four, now into, into five years, um, is, is not Penn State standards. Um, it's not Coquisa's standards. It's certainly not my standards. Um, but, uh, it, you know, this is what we have to remember is this is somebody that has brought great success um, to Penn State women's basketball. It's not like she doesn't know how to do that, that she's not proven it, that she's not done it. Um, so that, that's going to be a little bit different situation than maybe than, than, than somebody who's never shown that they have the ability to, to do it. But I think the important thing uh, for our student athletes, the important thing for our community is that nobody believes where we are right now is okay. And that includes Coquies. Sandy, an 18 college football playoff has been talked about a lot. You've mentioned it before. Now that you've I expected that question and I expected that question. So. <laughs> about the rest of our show. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now that you've kind of seen, two for two. <laughs> seen some of it, uh, where, where do you stand on that given that, you know, not just what we've seen the last couple of days, but... <laughs> Yeah. The la what we've seen the last couple of days might have changed some people's mm -hmm. minds. Um, so I, I really have two strong, uh, strong thoughts. The, the first one may surprise you, the second one won't. Um, I, I think even more importantly than what's the size of uh, the, the playoff, um, and I do think that, you know, we've got five years worth of data now, uh, that, that it is time. To, to look at that. Um, it's, uh, it's time to, to, we all knew the math didn't work. <laughs> there were five uh, power five conferences and four slots. Somebody was going get, to get left out. Um, so, it, you know, I hope nobody takes this as, okay, the Big Ten has been left out the last two years. Our champion has not played in it the last three years. Um, I don't think our response, is, our, our response is not strictly uh, about that. Um, it's, it's about what's right for college football. Uh, what's right for, for our student athletes? What's right for how do you uh, determine it on the field? How do you determine the champion uh, on the field? I don't know that an 18 playoff or a 16 playoff is, is the answer to that. I certainly, what I love about today is that every game matters. Um, and I don't want us to lose that. I don't want us to lose the specialness of the bowl structure. Um, that a bowl outside of the playoff still matters and is important and sells out and has two great teams playing, like the Citrus Bowl here that, that we're going to play tomorrow. Um, so I don't know what the answer uh, to, to that is. It's worth exploring. It's absolutely worth exploring. I think the time is right. I'd hate to see us wait, certainly hate to see us wait out the, the contract. But the piece that I'm more, uh, and you all have heard me say this before, I am more insistent about is that strength of schedule needs to matter. There is no loser if, if we all are motivated to up our strength of schedule. Our fans are the winners. Um, our television partners are the winners. Um, our communities are, are the winners. Um, you know, maybe if we play, we, the collective, uh, maybe if we play less uh, uh, FCS games, maybe, maybe the FCS <laughs> opponents are, are, are not the winners. But, um, so, and, and I think you heard me say this when, when we got left out in, uh, uh, in, in 16. Um, I do think the committee has, has sent um, really, really mixed 
signals there. Um, I don't think you can tell uh, the Big Ten that they need to go down to eight games. I don't think you can tell another conference that they need to go up to nine. But I do think that uh, the CFP um, can say everybody's got to play ten power five opponents. We don't care how you do it, but you got to play ten power five opponents. Uh, th that's just a one, one idea uh, around it. Strength of schedule needs to matter, and we need to find out a really powerful and consistent way of motivating uh, folks to play up. What about the way that you schedule, Sandy? Is there any consideration to maybe having more Big Ten games in September if you keep nine conference games the way the SEC does it and they maybe make a bigger game in September and have... Uh, yeah, we've moved a little bit to that. Uh, you've seen some season opening games. You've seen um, some uh, the, the Big Ten um, in our new television contract has has front loaded a little bit. So yeah, I, I think there uh, I think there are all kinds of ways to looking at that. With the Maryland game being moved to Friday night, is that something that has to cross? Does Penn State have to agree to that, or is that something that's made a decision that's made by the conference and by the the host institution? Yeah. So so we Penn State. Um, agreed to that up front as the um, as the, uh, the 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 new schedule and what we were presenting um, to our uh, television partners in the negotiations for uh, the the new media deal. Um, each institution in the Big Ten, um, I think we called them tolerances. You know what our uh, uh, what our tolerances would be for certain uh, different things, and uh, we've been very clear. We've been very clear with you all, with, with our community, certainly obviously with the leadership of the Big Ten, we're not interested in playing any home uh, Friday night games. Uh, we agreed we would consider uh, a Friday afternoon game on the Friday after Thanksgiving um, if, that were, if that were something that, uh, uh, that was, was attractive. Um, to be good partners, um, we agreed that we would do one away uh, Friday night game, uh, because let's face it, this is this was about the totality of our conference and giving opportunities to uh, some of, some of our other colleagues uh, to have prime time games on, on a Friday night, uh, and, and so we agreed to do maximum one uh, with the understanding, given the number of games of Friday night games that the conference would do over the course of the season, that it would not be every season, uh, and so we didn't have one the first year. We had one the second year. We're going to have one the third year. In all likelihood, we're not going to have one the fourth year. Um, so those are the conversations um, that uh, that I have with with Big Ten leadership. Sandy, when you get together with other Big Ten ads, uh, football specifically, what do you think is or maybe some of the biggest challenges this conference faces? Is it maybe the push for eight, or what are kind of those things on? your mind on your agenda when you guys all get together. Yeah, I mean I, I the only push for eight comes from some of our right. from some of our football coaches and I completely understand their perspective. Mm -hmm. Um but but it's also why we have ADs and conference commissioners and um you know to 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 really look at the at the bigger picture. Um you know when when we get together uh we're talking about how we maintain um a, a preeminent position. In, uh, in college football, um, and despite being um, not having participated in the college football playoff the last two years, um, I still feel really, really good about the quality of the football that's being played in our league um, and where and the, and the position that we do occupy uh, competitively uh, across the board. So it's how do we continue to, to, to build that uh, and, and improve that. And I would think, uh, uh, you know, the other thing is, is uh, where we are as um, – um, as a college athletics entity um, and some of the challenges uh, that, uh, that are being lobbed in um, to us, both legal and, and, and student health and safety and, you know, all, all the things that, from a student standpoint that we hold so dear and how do we continue to make sure that this game, not only th this game and college athletics in general, are really positive, are an educational driving force uh, for for us, for all 800 plus uh, of our students, um, that it's safe and it's productive, uh, and it's you know we're we're about uh, our uh, you know creating impact uh, for for our students for a lifetime of impact. Um, and how do we make sure that we continue to do that? Um, and then obviously we've got legal challenges that are that are real uh, for us that that we're dealing with. So we do spend a lot of time talking about about those things.
Dan, you mentioned the students. Temple's dealing with somewhat of a unique situation where they lost their coach. Kids have signed with the, that coach in the school, obviously, a couple weeks ago. Do you see students and student athletes having more freedoms as you have graduate transfers and, you know, this kind of this trend? Where do you see it going with student athletes? Yeah, we're, we're already seeing it. You know, the, the, the NCA made a, a subtle, but I do think an important shift in the, it's no longer that the schools have to grant permission. It's, it's just that, that the student says, hey, I'm interested in, in transferring. Um, that sounds minor. It's not. I, I think it's, it, it's pretty significant. Um, I also find it interesting, um, and look, the, 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 the Temple Miami situation is uh, pretty unusual. There are probably some other examples out there. I can think of a basketball one, but, um, but it, it, it is, it's pretty unusual. Uh, but I also find it interesting that um, there are some uh, folks out there saying, well, you know, coach can leave, but I, the coach can leave, but there's, there's a pretty hefty financial burden. Coach usually doesn't, isn't the one to bear that, uh, but, but it's not a, that's not a minor factor either. Sandy, uh, since we talked to you last, <coughs> excuse me, any um, further talks about bringing soccer maybe to Beaver Stadium? Yeah, we keep working on, on all of those. Uh, uh, NHL Midwin Midwinter Classic, soccer, more, more, another concert, um, those are all, we're committed to Beaver Stadium being more than a seven day a week uh, venue. Um, and it's just got to be the right situation. We're challenged with, uh, you know, some of the, the, uh, uh, the infrastructure um, I issues uh, with Beaver on some of those. Um, but uh, uh, we're also challenged with location. Uh, we're challenged with other uh, folks' schedules, uh, with our own schedule within, if we're talking in the summer, you know, we've got to move away from, uh, from the 4th of July, 4th Fest, and, uh, and Arts Fest, and some of those kinds of things. Um, but we continue to pursue that. That's, um, that hasn't gone away. Do you foresee any of that happening this upcoming summer? At this point, probably not, but I never say never. <laughs>